Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Candisha. It's a Shutter original film and it's coming to Shutter on July 22nd, which is a Thursday. I'm putting this review out ahead of time and because it's a new film and this review is coming out before it's available to stream, uh, no spoilers, although I will give a short synopsis. Gonna let people know ahead of time if you need to know this subtitled film. It is a French film, but I think it's totally worth watching. Um, this is a film that when I was initially watching it, I was kind of like, eh, I don't really I really think I like where they're going. The kind of evil in the film was not that interesting to me at first, but trust me, stick with the film. It really does end up picking up pace quite a bit. It is one of those films that really just does build until you get to the end. And uh, it turned into a film that I was not feeling all that interested in for maybe about the first half or so. And then ended up being pretty good, actually. I, I did enjoy this one. So, like I said, Candisha from 2020, written and directed by Alexander Bustillo and Julian Maury, who also did the films Inside, which I have not seen. I, I watched a lot of the films from that initial uh, French extre extreme uh, f horror film movement from a bunch of years ago, and Inside was one that I actually missed. I saw all the other big ones, like you know, Martyrs, High Tension, um, Frontiers, stuff like that. But I missed Inside, so I still need to watch that. They also did Livid, which I've been meaning to see, Among the Living, and The Deep House. I haven't seen any of their films, so I really need to. Also, Bustillo and Maori were, I believe, were the people for a while who were attached to the Hellraiser remake project, and then they just ended up getting out of it because... Like, it was basically stagnating. Things weren't going that well. And here we are. We still don't have the Hellraiser remake. Um, if we ever get it, we'll see. Not that I care that much, because the originals are good. Anyway, the quick synopsis of this, uh, it's about some high schoolers. I assume they're high schoolers. You don't actually see them in school. But some French high schoolers who are living in a kind of rundown cityscape. You know, you definitely get the idea their families are not well-to-do. They do drive that home in there. That's one of the kind of the messages of the film. And they f hear about this lore. Uh, they're into tagging buildings, doing graffiti with uh, spray paint, which is a cool aspect of the film, in my opinion, because uh, that's not covered all that much in horror at all. So I like that kind of, you know, tagging graffiti culture at play here. So anyway, they, they find out about this kind of uh, Middle Eastern lore that they start to um, th talk about, joke about, and then in a desperate situation, one of them ends up utilizing it, which brings an entity, which brings death. And that's as far as I'm going to take it. Um, yeah, that's as far as I'm going to take it with the story. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check the film out. I'm recommending it. I think it's a pretty good film. It's not like the best film I've ever seen, but it's solid. I enjoyed it. The camera work is immediately very engaging with nice zooms and following shots. That's one of the things. It looks really good. Uh, you can tell that Mari and Bustillo have been doing film for quite a while. Uh, directing and cinematography looking excellent. Uh, there are a few moments where there's some lighting issues. Uh, not a whole lot, though. It's it's very much early on in the film where it's kind of one of the issues that I kind of harp on, which is when it's so dark that you can't really see what you're supposed to be seeing on the screen, but that's very fleeting. Um, it doesn't get repeated a whole lot as an issue within the film, so thank goodness. The music used is modern for the most part. Hip-hop and rap is used, which really does match with the kind of young characters in here, so you it's appropriate, you, you know, you get that feel. So if that's not your speed, you're potentially not really going to like the music. Although there is the kind of normal score to go along with the film to increase mood at the right times, uh, horror-wise. And it, that's done well as, well as well. The characters refer to each other, at least initially, at, by race, by in these kind of really reductive ways, by race. And they make kind of stereotypical jokes based off race with each other. So I don't know if this was kind of a way to poke fun at, at um, you know, racial divide within the city, because I think this is Paris. I mean, that's my guess. I don't think they ever come out and say it, but I don't know if they're trying to like poke fun at racial divide or if they're just trying to depict youth as they kind of are nowadays, 
where they, you know, kind of take things that are uncomfortable, things that are kind of social issues, and they just kind of like joke about them just amongst themselves in a comfortable manner. But that's in there. And I got to feel like there's a real purpose there. I just don't 100% know what that purpose is. It doesn't make itself immediately known, but that is something that's in there. So I don't know if that will make some people uncomfortable or not. Um, so yeah, but later on, they start actually referring to each other as by their regular names. The acting is really good. It's, it's very well done. And the relationships end up feeling very real between the characters. So, and that's actually partially because of the acting, but it's also because of the writing as well. I think the characters are well written. The dialogue is well written. And obviously, like I said, the acting is really good. So those things really come together to give you this feeling like you're watching actual teens interacting with each other, having relationships, having problems, going through this crazy situation. Uh, and it plays as pretty real. Uh, it's well executed, in my opinion, the, that aspect. There is uh, this one moment. There's some CGI used in this film, and there's this one moment where the CGI is kind of like front and center, and it's very much focused on, and it looks really wonky. Now, I have a problem with it because, A, it looks really wonky, and when you focus on CGI the way they did, it's not going to look that hot. Um, there's a pun in there. You'll, you'll figure that out but uh, <laughs> unintentional, but um, it, they could have shot that scene in a different way so that they didn't need to show that bad CGI the way they did. So that's kind of my problem with it. They could have gotten around that. They should have known that that CGI wasn't going to come out that well, and it didn't come out very well. And, and those types of moments really kind of, as an audience member, take you out of the film for a little bit because you're like, oh, that just didn't look so hot. But, you know, minor thing, it happens once not like a long-standing issue. There is a scene involving an animal that people are really not going to like. And one of the problems is it wasn't really a necessary scene to do. So I don't know if they're going for shock value here or if they felt like it's really adding something. I don't think so. Uh, a lot of people are going to hate it. Now with film, with stuff, scenes like that where I can definitely tell that the animal wasn't necessarily treated super poorly or, uh, well, treated poorly at all. The animal was held in a normal manner, I should say. But you could tell, I could tell, that it was fake, what was going on. Obviously, there is an actual animal harm in this, but j some people just seeing animal harm depicted is too much. And it's a cute animal, so this is really going to send some people... Uh, into a rage, I think, about this. And I'm not angry about it, but I do kind of see things like that and just be like, really, is this like, like, do we need to do this? Is this necessary? Because people know that that's like a button pushing thing. And maybe that's the reason it's in there. It's just to kind of push buttons. But I just didn't see it as necessary. It doesn't really add anything to the film, in my opinion. So I, di I didn't understand it. The actual lore that gets introduced within this, that kind of Middle Eastern lore I was talking about, is uh, really cool, actually. I, I found that very, very interesting, in my opinion. And I think that moment where the lore is really explained kind of marks where the film really starts to get really moving and amping up and getting a lot better, in my opinion. That's where my interest really, really, really jumped in. Because prior to that, I was kind of like, okay, I mean, the film's okay, I'm just kind of like floating along with these characters. Where are they going? I'm not that interested in what's going on with this thing, this evil. But then the lore happens, and I think it just really starts to hit its stride. I like the setting of the rundown cityscape. It's not a setting you see a ton, and the way it looks and the way they use it as a, lo as a shooting location as a and for set design is really cool, especially the uh, kind of... A rundown building that a lot of the graffiti tagging ends up happening in. Uh, that one in particular looked really good and kind of reminded me of a sp specific film from some decades ago that I will talk about at the very end of this, who I think that film heavily, heavily influenced this film, but I'll talk about it at the end. I understand why they did the final scene the way they did, but from an actual story standpoint, it doesn't make sense. The, the very final scene in this film, when I saw it, I was like, this doesn't make sense 
for the storyline, for the characters. This would not be happening, most likely, based off everything else that has happened in this film. I understand why they did it, and it makes sense, because they tried to have an impact with it, but it doesn't work for me story-wise. I would be interested to see what everyone else thinks about that. You can go ahead and put it in the comments when you, if when you see it. Yeah, just saying. Um, but some people may love it. Some people may be like, oh, that's perfect. Uh, the first bunch of deaths are very lackluster, but trust me, stick with it. They definitely start to get better. They get a lot better, and there are a few death scenes that are quite good, that I quite enjoyed, that have nice, nice, nice practical effects. So nice on that. There's a point here that revenge is not what people think it is and can cause a lot more damage than anyone knows. Uh, this is actually a kind of theme that I really like to see in film because especially in American culture, we're very into revenge in films and actual real life revenge is not what people think it is uh, based off of films. So that's why I love films like this as well. At, well, I don't love this film. I like this film, but I like love the theme that they put in there. Uh, also, like Cham Wook Park's Revenge Trilogy, like those three films, Old Boy, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and Lady Vengeance, they're basically all about how revenge is not what you think it is and how it's actually not satisfying uh, and can just cause so much more chaos and damage than you would think. So that's at play here. So I think it's done well. I also think this film serves as an allegory for being of a marginalized group living in tough conditions and all the loss that ends up coming with that life situation. Um, once again, going back to that rundown cityscape, um, you can kind of make some guesses as to, you know, the tie-ins there and, and what that allegory is. But um, yeah, I think it was intelligently enough done and it works my final thing i can't help but feel that this film was heavily 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 influenced by the original Candyman. just gonna say that uh, a lot of the stuff looks kind of similar a lot of the stuff feels kind of similar if you watch this film and think Candyman, it's got to be influenced heavily by Candyman. it really does but you can let me know your thoughts on it. Like I said, go ahead and put some comments down there. And just in general, anything about this film, uh, you can go ahead and put spoilers in the comments. That is fine. I will allow that. Um, but let's talk about it. Yeah. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a solid three star rating. Like I said, I don't like love this film, but I do like it. And it does make me want to go back and watch Inside and Livid and check out some other uh, Bustillo and Maori uh, films. So yeah. And I'd be interested to see what they're going to do in the future. But do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. You're awesome. If you haven't, it takes you a second. It's painless. It costs you nothing. And I really, really appreciate it because it helps keep me motivated to keep doing these videos. Also, hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, whether it's some of these uh, no-spoiler uh, reviews for films that are just about to hit shutter or if it's the spoiler-packed reviews and with analysis that I do for older films or unboxings or haul videos or any of that type of stuff. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. It does mean a lot to me. And until next time, keep it brutal.